Now you can carry out quite a nice investigation into these components here, which are resistors. Now different resistors, uh, there's different sorts and different types, and they also come in different sizes. And you can actually tell um, the, sort of the value of this resistor by looking at the rings, uh, the different coloured rings on the outside. However, that does get a bit tricky, and I've forgotten how to do it myself. Uh, and what you should find is that when you do the practical yourself as a student, your teachers should have given you certain known values of resistors. So it might be that, you know, that's perhaps 10 ohms. This isn't a 10 ohm resistor, but that's uh, what we're going to imagine. So you maybe have maybe a 10 ohm resistor, uh, a 20 ohm resistor, and a 30 ohm resistor. And the first part of the investigation involves... Uh, you know, having your known values of, resistant, of resistors and putting them in different combinations of series, perhaps, or in parallel, uh, and basically then trying to calculate what the combined resistance should be. And to work at the combined resistance, it's simply that if you have uh, resistors in series, their combined resistance is equal to the sum of their individual resistances. If, however, they're in parallel, then uh, we find that 1 over RT, their total combined resistance, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 uh, and so on, for however many uh, resistors you might have. Uh, so as you have resistors in parallel, the combined resistance goes down. And a point to note is that you've got to make sure that you don't just give your values 1 over RT, you've got to take the, the inverse of it to get your value of RT. What you can then do is use a multimeter as an ohm meter. So this uh, multimeter here, pretty standard equipment, all I need to do is uh, turn it round to a looking at the ohm symbol down here. Now this is going to measure my resistance directly. And what you can then do is use a couple of leads uh, to a couple of crocodile clips to just put that across the end of a resistor. And that will tell you the, uh, the actual resistance of that. And when you have different components, perhaps in series or in parallel, what you'll find is that their combined resistance uh, then goes down. Okay, we can see that we added another component there, the resistance actually went down. Now that really depends on the kind of the size of the resistors you've got at your school. Uh, and sometimes you can join these up using crocodile clips like I've got here. Other times you use something called a component holder, which is basically uh, often just a crocodile clip mounted to a piece of plastic. And that allows you to hold your components in nice and safely. So the first part of this investigation is straightforward. It's about uh, working out what the combined resistance should be and then just confirming that using uh, a multimeter used as an ohm meter. Now the next setup of equipment looks a bit like this. What you have is maybe a five volt power supply, and this is something that should be kept at five volts, so often using a power pack is ideal. What you then have is a combination of three resistors. So all you're going to be doing is connecting these up in series, again using crocodile clips or using component holders and wires, whatever your school might have. And across each of these, there's going to be a voltmeter. Uh, and so these three voltmeters, uh, so you do need quite a lot, I guess, in the whole class. Uh, these are going to be used to measure the potential difference across each of the resistors. And what you need to do is record the resistances. So perhaps that's 10, that's 20, and that's a, a 30 ohm resistor. These aren't the real numbers, but I'm just trying to make it nice and simple. What you can then look at is perhaps the um, percentage of the total resistance. So the total resistance in this case would be 60 ohms. So this is a, a value of a sixth of the total resistance. This has got a value of the third of the total resistance, and that's half of the total resistance. What you can then do is record your values for V. And depending on uh, you know, um, the kind of setup you've got, what you'll then find is that your values for V will be different across this, this, and this component. What you can then do is look at how the values for V1, V2, and V3 uh, how much of uh, the total potential difference supplied that is. So is that indeed a sixth of the total um, potential difference across this small resistor? Do bigger resistors take a greater share of that potential difference? Well, that's something that you can verify and find out experimentally. But this one here, again, is a very nice, simple setup. Just take cut time to kind of uh, set up your initial circuit, make sure that all the components are, are nicely corrected, uh, connected together, and then it's a case of just methodically working through your data to record that. And then you can find out the link between the resistance of a component and its share of the potential difference for a series circuit.